Hey everybody, wanted to pop on and touch base, say hello, and talk about how the gospel, the simple, pure gospel of the Lord is being attacked. And, you know, it's no surprise because in the scriptures, uh, we were warned about this, especially in the latter days where the apostate church is going to be... Uh, taking over literally where sound scripture and doctrine sound doctrine um, is going to be replaced for the doctrine of devils literally meaning that um, what Christ did on the cross that you know saved us that act of grace from God which is nothing that we actually did ourselves we didn't earn it it was a free gift from God um, the Bible says that for whosoever believes in him. So that means anyone, wherever, whatever religion or background you come from, if you believe the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ that saved us from our sins, that he did the work, it was his blood that did the redemption on the cross. It was not, the Bible says, it is not of yourself, so no man can boast. So there's nothing we can add to it or take away from the gospel. The gospel is the saving grace. And it's being perverted everywhere. And what I'm realizing, and after doing just in-depth studies um, about different denominations, and um, just like, why is all this division happening? Well, I, I, it is so crazy what I'm finding out, but in a nutshell, they're literally enemies within the church, placed in the church to deceive the masses, to take away your first love, to start um, keeping, taking your eyes off of Christ and putting it on the different, you know, the prosperity gospel, um, you know, the gospel of, uh, you name it, all the 150 million gospels out there. You know, the gospel of works, the uh, the, the Catholic uh, way to salvation, the SDA way to salvation, the Mormon way to salvation. I tell you what, you know, that's why Jesus said that you're going to suffer persecution for my name's sake. Think about this. If we just print, preach, if we just like spread the simplicity of the gospel, we get persecuted. So right there, Jesus is telling us that, um, that this is going to happen. It's amazing when Christians are coming up against Christians because they don't have the Holy Spirit. The people that think that they have to work their way to salvation or keep their salvation, um, they probably are not saved. I'm not judging. I'm just saying when you have the Holy Spirit guiding you to all truth, realizing that we are hopeless without Christ, um, they come out, you know, these people are saying, oh, um, well, that'll just give you a license to go sin. Well, if that's your attitude, then you're not saved. We get so humbled before Christ, realizing our brokenness in him. I mean, without him. Um, that we are nothing without him. He was there from the beginning of creation till the end of time. And we get to be a part of that if we just believe. He made it simple to confound the people that think they're wiser than anyone else. No, 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 no. You must do step A, B, C, and D. No, 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 no. You have to be. It's That's not, that's not the gospel. Go read Paul, all the uh, epistles from Paul to the churches. Now, when, he, you know, another way that people kind of uh, pervert the gospel is when they read like James or maybe the Corinthians, um, you know, you have to remember that being a follower of Christ and the discipleship is different than the salvation. You know, you have to separate the two. So if you, once you are saved, you're discipling, being discipled and discipling others, showing people the true gospel, uh, getting sanctified. And this is what Paul was doing to the church is like, you know, how could you be go living in sin and, and, and doing these, these, uh, 
destructive things to the body and to your, you know, to others while you're in Christ. And I'm sure there was many false converts in there as well. There's just, there really is a true change of heart when you understand what God did for you. It's just like you can't even, it's so big and so wide and so deep that you can't fathom it. And you can't help but talking about God, about what the Lord did for us. So anyway, the gospel, it's, it's simple. Read your Bible. Read word for word. King James Version. Um, I'm, I'm finding out that a lot of the new versions are being perverted by the, um, there's the Jesuit order that was the counter reformation and they are perverting everything so they can bring in the ecumenical movement, which is the unity and like more of the mystery religion and the mystery Babylonian religion where it's about everything else, but the true gospel. It's how whatever works for you, however you're going to get your way to heaven. And that's not the gospel. So, um, it is by grace through faith that you are saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. Because when we add to anything, like, God, look what I did for you today. It's not putting our eyes on what Christ did. Now, Again, when we are disciples, we have that hope and we just, we, we, it's like this, we dedicate our lives to the gospel, you know, in whatever, if we're working or this or that, whatever we're doing, but we don't have to keep worrying about salvation. That's like a done deal. We have to just, you know, go through the sanctification and then ultimately the glorification of the body the soul spirit together um, it's amazing and it's simple and uh, I'm gonna keep spreading the the gospel the Great Commission which is what the Apostles were doing and until it got hijacked in inside the church so for all of you that understand the gospel of grace then I applaud you I mean I've had to go through many different uh, you know, denominations, Catholicism, um, evangelical. And I'm not saying that, you know, all these people are not saved in the churches. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if we focus on our leaders, they're all just leading us astray. If I was a leader, I'd get up. If I was in, the, you know, a pastor in the church, I'd be saying, this is the gospel, man. Do, do you understand how like important this is for your souls, for your very souls? And that's the first thing I would do in my message. I wouldn't be being like, so having a rough day while well, Jesus is next to you. I would be making sure that everybody knew the gospel and what that was. Because if you don't know that you're a sinner, you're, you don't need a savior. And then we can disciple everything's twisted right now and muddy so I'm giving you the gospel the simple gospel it's in Corinthians it's in the New Testament plenty of places where um, the gospel talks about grace that Paul said it's Paul's gospel that he was given to Christ to preach to the Gentiles you got to rightly divide the word otherwise you're gonna pick out stuff from the from when Jesus was in his ministry you know Jesus didn't die yet so how could he preach his death and resurrection when he was still on his earthly ministry? He wasn't dead yet. That came after, that was the dispensation after Christ died to bring the gospel, to bring the good news, get right in your dispensations. That's something recently I learned too, that I'm like, oh my gosh, the whole Bible is like alive now once I understood that. All right, God bless you guys. Talk to you later.